Good morning, Saturday the 3rd of May 2014. It's another United Kingdom talk with, guess what? Another bad throat. Yes, it just goes on and on now. It's been about three months now, boys and girls. Uh, I have, if you were watching the uh, short videos that we do, or you haven't seen those yet, oh, it's easy to find. Every day there's a short video, Monday through to Saturday, uh, Monday through to Friday, as well as this long show on Saturdays. And you can find those at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. I'm thinking about getting another um, web domain address thing for that. Uh, except I can't think of a title. Maybe United Kingdom video or something like that. I don't know. So youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK is where you find the short videos. Uh, this throat thing, as you know, has been going on since uh, mon- uh, January. I keep losing my voice. It feels like this gland is up all the time. Sometimes worse than others. Uh, oh, I had a new thing this week in there. New thing this week. Uh, oral thrush. No, it doesn't. <laughs> It's not as bad. You're wondering where that came from, aren't you? You Stop it now. Let me tell you the story before you make your own mind up. OK, so I have a bit of mild asthma. Apparently, using the asthma thing, the asthma spray in the mouth thing, can, can and indeed has caused thrush in the mouth. So I had that on my tongue. I was aware that my tongue... Had this coating on it, like a. Uh, it just felt funny, so I put, uh, put my tongue out like that. I don't know. Ah, 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 ah. Ha 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 ha! Right, and there was like a white on there. It's not on there now, and that's because I went to the chemist, and I bought this Daco- Dakota stuff. I don't know, it was Dakota or something like that. I think it was called, and um, <coughs> you <coughs> you put it on your finger. And you rub it on the uh, 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 the affected area of the tongue, and this stuff just goes quite quickly. You know, actually, within one one treatment, it seems to have gone. So I'm doing that at the moment. The only thing is, it feels like it's in my throat as well. Now I can't get my finger down my throat because if you try that, of course, uh, uh, <coughs> you know, you 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 kind of reach, don't you? Uh, oh, so I can't do that. Um, however, I am going to see my um, special doctor. On Tuesday, I'm going to ask him uh, if he can if, if he can find anything wrong. But Monday, I was at the hospital again. Uh, this was for a, a scan, so I went in there. Actually, Ron, my best mate Ron, came with us this time, so he was sitting in the room, and uh, we went in there. Lovely hospital, actually, Frimley Park Hospital. Very clean, and they've got nice little shops and tea. Not not over expensive tea. I think it was about one pound fifty for a large cup, so that was all right. Um, and various little bookshops and things like that. And, of course, the, the, the obligatory charity shop as well. So very clean and nice. And I sat in a chair. Lovely doctor. Don't know what his name was. He was very, very nice. So I told him the story. And then I said, have you got anything else wrong with you? And I, so I told him about that. And um, sat in the chair. And he said, right, whereabouts do you think it is? So I, I swallowed. You see, I can feel that, you see. And I said, it's right on there. OK, I'll start there. So he got this scan thing. First of all, he put the, um, he said, oh, do you mind getting a bit of, um, oh, what's that stuff called? Je- is it jelly? Jelly? Oh, it's that, um, oh, what's it called now? Lubricating jelly. Lubricating jelly. He said, do you mind getting that on your shirt? I said, no, I could take it off if you want, you know, because cause I've got the fit body now, haven't I? I've got the fit body, you know. Lost a stone and four or five pounds. Got the fit body now. So don't bother me now. Yep, off with the shirt. So I took the shirt off. And I'm lying now and he's put this stuff on. He's started on my neck. And very quickly he says, well... He says, I think we're going to be all smiles. He says... He says, but I'll do the rest of it. And he was about... I would say... Seven, eight, nine, maybe ten minutes. Doing the whole area. He'd come up to the side of my jaw where my teeth were, which were, I thought was a bit strange, but there you go. You know, this is what they do. And all round the back of the neck down there, or the front of the neck, all round the area that I say is given the problems. And he says, right, well, your saliva gland's completely normal. Your thyroid gland is completely normal. And, and he said, you'll want to hear this, your lymph nodes, all completely normal. He said, I can't see anything wrong in there. OK, fine. So that was good. Um, said thank you very much. Thank you to the nurses and that who were in there. 
And that was the end of that. And I got back in the car with Ron and, and we come home and pleased, you know, pleased that they haven't found anything serious. So what is it? Don't know. <laughs> and it just goes on. Uh, today, the, the, the voice problem is back again. Don't know what it is. Strange, isn't it? Three months now. I hope it's going to clear up at some point, possibly of its own accord. Yeah, I don't want to be like this forever and ever now. Unable to talk half the time. Christ. I mean, that's the worst thing that could happen to me, isn't it? Maybe not to you. Maybe you would actually like to loo like me to lose my voice, would you? <laughs> I won't be able to come here and chat to you then. So that's the news about the voice, and uh, that's why I'm speaking like this today. Let's say uh, good morning to Ben, who's in London, who says, "Surprised you didn't uh, didn't do a what, dear? I don't I don't know what that is, so I'm not going to read it out. Do we have to have the rude cut the rude thing? You know, I'm not going to do rude stuff on here. We don't do rude, thank you. And good morning to Daniel, who's in Camberley, in Surrey, very posh part of the world, who says, "Oh yes, KY jelly. That was the stuff that they put on this um, scanning thing. What is it? Oh, not X-ray, ultrasound thing that he was doing on my neck. That was it. He says, uh, "Just sat down with a cup of tea, ready for the show today. I have lost seven pounds this week. That's a lot of that's a lot to lose in a week, Daniel." You want to be careful with that, mate. That's not good. They do say you don't really want be wanting to lose more than, I think it's two pounds a week, right? I, 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 I never lost seven pounds in a week. That's a little bit too much, mate. You know, I, you'll be, I bet you're hungry, aren't you? You watch that. Just, just be very careful. With it. Don't lose another seven pound next week. That's no good. That's no good, Daniel. You've got to do it properly, mate. Because it'll all come back on again and, and more. So just just watch that. Please be very careful with that. Um, and we say good morning to Shania on the Isle of Wight. Good morning, Shania, who enjoys the warm-up music. Yeah, it's the same music every week, Shania. Uh, the reason for that is that's all copyright issues and all that business. And all that stuff is permitted to be played without licenses and things like that. So that's why it's the same music every week. I'm glad you like it, Shania. Starts, the warm-up music usually starts at about 25 past 11. So if, if next week you click on at 25 past 11, you'll see the Union Jack there. And the show follows in half an hour, whatever it says there. Um, and you'll get the whole piece of music, which is about half an hour long, OK? Uh, good morning to Wendy. Morning, Wendy. And uh, Wendy, I hope you have spotted that the new Barry Manilow picture is behind me this morning because we have a Barry Manilow calendar on us on the wall and it's the May picture. Just turned it over this morning, actually. And he's wearing like a a black, shiny jacket. I don't know what that is. Very nice black, shiny jacket with little white lights behind him, Wendy. Because, of course, it's only... Um, Three, it's only 10 days now, isn't it? It's only 10 days to the Barry Manilow concert. I'm going twice. Is that the Wembley one? I think it's the Wembley one first, is it? I can't remember. Hang on, let me have a look at my tickets. Oh, I've got all the tickets here, yes. Now, how many people are coming to Wem Wembley with me? Is it one or two? Let me have a quick look. Oh, no. So, is it the Wembley one? And say on there, does it? AX. Oh gosh, I don't know. <laughs> One minute. Why well, don't it? you'd think it would say where it was on the blooming ticket, wouldn't you? Uh, I want to talk about Scouts later. If you've ever been in the Scouts, yes, it's the Wembley one. So Tuesday the thirteenth of May, at Wembley, Wembley, Wembley. No footballers there, please. Stay away. We don't want your sort. OK, so I'm uh, going with one person to Wembley. That person I'm going with, we do not know yet because it all depends on whether my niece has had her baby or not. Now, it is due now. No head has yet appeared. Oh, <laughs> oh that, that picture just went through my mind. No head of child has yet appeared, although she is getting the odd pain here and there, but nothing too regular. So if she's had the baby, then she's coming on May the 13th. If it's not, 
then it will be one of my aunts and then she'll be coming uh, on the 26th the, the spare room is all ready for my niece oh yes no, the room is hoovered it's all ready for her to arrive to come and watch Barry Manilow with me on the 13th of May at uh, Wembley and if not on the 26th of May at the O2 I'm taking two people there so looking forward to that. Also, uh, Manilow fans, you might like to know there is a brand new DVD available from Amazon. Barry Manilow live in Vegas. This is available now. I have ordered it Thursday and I got a little email this morning telling me that it's going to be delivered today. So it's very exciting. Barry Manilow live in Vegas. Unfortunately, not Blu-ray. You would have thought they'd done that on Blu-ray, wouldn't you? To play in my in my my my, my relatively new Blu-ray player. Oh, wonderful quality picture. But it's only in normal. But it doesn't matter. We don't mind. Even if Barry is not on Blu-ray, I mean, even even if he was on an old VHS cassette, I would personally go out and purchase a VHS cassette player from somewhere. I would, and do it like that. Barry Manalo. New DVD out. Um, uh, Wendy says, you poor soul sounds sore. I know it's not, but it sounds it. Yeah, my, my throat is not sore. I want to point that out. There's no soreness there. It feels, number one, like there's a coating, which could well be the oral thrush, which was on the, ta on, the ta on the tongue. Now, obviously, I can't get it down my throat, so I looked that up, and you get tablets for that. So I'm thinking that on Tuesday, my special doctor is going to give me tablets for, the for, the for that going down the throat. Um, it also feels dry a lot of the time, only on that side. Isn't it weird? But like I say, so far... All these little things, the the, the, the the camera up the nose, which is something that you never want that done. I tell you that now. Camera up the nose, um, the two scans I've done, nothing there. Very strange, very strange. Uh, good morning to... Let's, oh, Ben says, I want you to sing Barry's false teeth song. To, what false teeth song? Barry hasn't got... There's nothing false about our Barry. Don't start slating Barry Manilow. Oh, Ben, be very, very careful. People that watch this show, their entire lives revolve around Barry Manilow. Do be very careful. OK, uh, Mark says, thank you for the flower behind you. Yeah, we've got some flowers behind us today. It is an orchid. An orchid is sitting behind me today. Isn't it nice? Do you like it? I got that from the garden centre because I've been down the garden centre twice this week. Uh, once... Well, actually, on uh, both occasions, because uh, it was my best mate Ron's birthday, uh, you may have seen a couple of little videos about that this week. Once again, if you missed those, you can find those at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. There's some good videos in there this week. I think um, yesterday's one came from a hotel where I took him out, him and his boyfriend, uh, to afternoon tea at the... Coworth, Cosworth, Coworth Hotel, which is in Ascot for afternoon tea. And we had a walk around the grounds afterwards. Oh, my God, you want to see it? It is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And we came across, well, on, on our little walks, cause it, and it was a bit, it was raining a bit. So they give you an umbrella after you've had your tea. Can we walk around? Yes, no problem at all, sir. Really good service. Fantastic service. Highly recommend it. If you come to the UK... Go and have afternoon tea. Not in a hotel in London, where it's all busy, busy, busy. This is in Ascot. The grounds are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And you can have your afternoon tea there. Um, you can do the cheap one or the expensive one. The one with the champagne is £46 each. OK, you get a glass of champagne. And I'm not known for drinking, but... On this special occasion, I did have a little glass of champagne. And let me tell you, after half a glass, I started chalking. Oh, my God, I felt quite drunk. Because, of course, I don't drink at all. Never. I drive all over the place, so I, I don't drink at all. But Ron don't drink either. And he, although it was his birthday, he still didn't want to drink. So he drove us um, to the uh, hotel. And myself and Andy, his other half, had the uh, glass of champagne. And uh, you get sandwiches. And the sandwiches keep coming. All right? You don't just get one plate of sandwiches. They're, like, stacked up on this three-tier thing. And you get sandwiches uh, on the bottom kind of long plate. 
I can't remember. We uh, we asked for vegetarian ones. <coughs> and when they first came, that was on the little thing we filled out because uh, we booked it by computer, you know, on, online. And when it first came out, there were various meat ones. And so, oh, we did ask for veg. Oh, I'm very, very sorry, sir. Took it away straight away. No arguments. I mean, brilliant, brilliant service. Um, really good, and a very good looking boy who was serving us, I must say. He was from Sydney. He was about 23, 24. <gasps> Perfect shape. I mean, I used to be that shape once. I really did. But, you know, you become a man and um, then that's it, isn't it? You, you lose that shape. <laughs> and you get scones on the top with jam and cream and little cakes on the top. But the sandwiches, uh, they just keep coming. And, you know, as you're running out, you don't ask for more. He's straight over. Would you like a top up of the sandwiches? Oh, um, yes. oh, go on. You might as well. Yeah. Thank you very much. And he bought some more sandwiches across. Uh, and, of course, the, the tea and everything. And as I say, uh, it's not cheap. It was, uh, I think, 46 or 49 pounds if you had the champagne. And it's 29 pounds if you don't have the champagne. So that's fair enough. But it's, you know, you, you, it's not like you're doing it every week, is it? Oh, although I could. I, I've, I've said to them now, we, we need to go out once a month now. Uh, to something like this, to an old stately house where I can take my little camera with me, a little iPhone, and do another video for the short videos. And, we can, and it's, it's a nice afternoon. And it started at 2.30 to 4.30. I think we left at 4.30. There's no rushing. You know, they, they don't try and rush you out. It's, you sit in these really comfortable chairs and um, uh, uh uh, table table in front of you and we were actually singing in like sitting in like a very large conservatory and there was some people opposite us and I was trying to make this little video and I'm like you know speaking quietly to the uh, to the camera and I did become aware of another table looking over you know wondering what was going on they probably recognized me you know from shows all over the world or YouTube probably probably couldn't quite place me do you know what I mean I mean I did I did see one of the women suddenly reach into her pocket and take out some old coins to see if he, she could recognize my face on any of those or something like that <laughs> I'm very I'm very very naughty very very naughty um and then, as I say, we walked around the grains and I did make a video and you can watch that at uh, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. That one's about seven minutes long, I think. All right, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right, we've got a call coming in here already. Um, have I got my speakers on? Let me see. I think I've got my speakers on. Hello, who's on the line? Hello. Good morning. Is that Chris? Good morning. Uh, good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello. Afternoon. Good afternoon. I, I have to say, I've been watching your video. Is that and wise? your voice sounds very sore, but also very sexy. Oh, you, you quite like the sound of the voice this morning, do and you? And I'm, I'm looking at you now, and you, you look a lot younger. Oh, thank you very much. That's all the weight loss. Yes, you, you look very young, and um, very nice voice. And I, I, I'm not sure about your, your, your top you're wearing. Oh, you don't, what, what is it you don't like? The, the grey one, or...? Or the the grey one, the grey one. Shall I take it off? Please. Sorry, please. that it wasn't it wasn't a particularly expensive one, I must say. See, underneath you, is another grey one, from? but it's got got like a, a black and yellow collar to it, which I got from uh, Florida when I was on holiday. Who is this, please? Hello, hello, it's me here, yes. And um I just like mm. to say I do enjoy your 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 your, your T V show and um I just wondered if you could sign sign me an autograph. You want an autograph? Please. Yeah, yes. just a and minute. Then. A picture. Um, could you laminate it? Because I feel that I might do something with that picture. Yeah, I've got a laminator. Yeah, you want to be... You. What you mean? You want to put it under a cup or something like that? No, no, but it would maybe get something on it, yes. Because you're very handsome. Oh, thank you very much. Where are you? I'm here. Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> I'm here as well. Oh, lovely. Um, can I ask you how old you are? Yes, 51. 51? Yes. You don't look 51. Oh, thank you very much. How old do you think I look you today? You might have done years ago, but you don't look 51, mate. Sorry? <laughs> Good morning, Chris Reardon. Good morning. <laughs> you know who this is? Of course I know who it is. That's How why my finger talking? hasn't left the fader yet. <laughs> this is Keith, who rang in last week in Spain. Hello, Chris. 
Oh, not Spain, is it? It's um... Tenerife, if, you, if, if, we, if we're getting technical, but which is part of the Canary Islands, which is governed by the government of Spain. But they don't like... Off the, the north or north or west coast of Africa. They don't like to be called Spanish, though, do they? No, the Canarian no. people here... I'm Canarian, I'm Canarian. But you can tell the difference, actually, because as you know... Um, I like to frequent a beach where you wear no clothing. Oh, we're not going on about that again, are we? No, no, I'm just saying that you can tell the difference from between a Spanish person and a Canarian person. I don't think I'd like that, to be honest, to be naked Why? on a beach. Oh, it's not my cup of tea at all. No. No, it's like when you look at those strange pictures of people online, you know. I think it's better to have a little bit covered up, like Adam and Eve did. Yes. I agree. Well, I, I don't. I just, I just like to lay there and feel the freedom of it. Oh, oh. no, not my cup of tea at the all. The reason I'm ringing you is, yes. is that um, today because um, I've, you know, quite a few people are are um, um, doing, like, I mean, you've been doing your, your talk shows and everything like that for, for, for a long time now. And as you know, I've just started doing my um, nighttime natters. But yes. also, um, I think... I didn't realise. I looked back at some of my first videos of Coco, and two years that they are. Are they two really? Years. Wow! And um, you know, I mean, basically, the the, the Coco videos are com- fun comedy. Yes. It's tongue in cheek or whatever, but yes. obviously, it's real life issues. Yes. It's real yes. Fun. Yes. And um, there's a particular person who's now copying us. Oh, who is and this then? Um, I don't know if I should say the name because I don't really want to give them the publicity. Oh, okay. Well, don't. But I'll give you a clue. Um, they, 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 they do drag very badly, and um, they're big. Oh, and, okay. Uh, right. Okay. And they're uh, amateur. They're the worst you could get. Well, <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? I might do. Yes. Yes. Well, they've put a thing on their Facebook status, and it said. Um, because actually, what um, Coco said was, um, if you really think you're that good, you're deluded, because you're never going to win Drag Idol. You are, to the drag scene, what Jedward are to the music industry. Okay. So, which is, you know, and I think that sometimes you need to, to give people guidance and say, look, what you think you're going to make, or well, right, this person's writing a book and doing a play, and well, um, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, you, I, I, the I young must... person hasn't lived... But the thing that made me laugh said, it said, on this status, if a certain queen thinks that I'm a Jedwood whatever, blah, 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 funny how my reputation is better than his. Right. A reputation of what, exactly? Well, I don't know. That's what I would like to know. Reputation as, as what? What, 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 what? I've got a stutter. Well, you just, com- just, com- just, have, just have to let people get on with it, Keith. Yes. Just let them get on with it. I must say, sometimes, you know, um, it depends. You know when you're doing something and you're thinking it's all right and, you know, everything is perfect and everything, and then someone else comes along and says, oh, um, you should... um, Okay, take take the diet thing. Well, I haven't... I'm not on a diet. I've made a lifestyle change. Big difference there. You know? And... So people say, oh, you know, you've done really well. How do you do it? So you tell them and then you say and then they say to you and then you, you, you tell them what you've been eating. And then you say, um, and I've lost uh, a stone and nearly a stone and four stone and five pounds. Yeah. And they say, well, what, what do you eat then? And then then I started and this happened the other day. Well, I start in the morning with porridge. All right. What porridge do you have? I said, oh, I like the Dorset cereal one with honey. Oh, you shouldn't eat that. Well, why not? Oh, it's full of sugar. You'll put weight back on. But I've been eating that all the time. Yeah, but it's not good. You know, and you're the, and they're standing there twice the size of you, right? Well, and they're telling me you, yeah. what to do where I've already done the job. And you think, yeah. oh, go away. Do you know what I mean? Look- I'm just saying that. When, you, when you're doing something and you think it's right and someone comes along and says, oh, no, you shouldn't be doing it like that. And you think to yourself, <clears throat> mind your own business that's it but you look great i'm looking at you now and you look i haven't seen you for a little while and you look you you look very young chris it's funny that 
Have you got makeup on? You've no, makeup I don't on, wear makeup. No, I think it must be the white. I've got the, the lights and ear on. Yeah. I don't think I'm yeah. particularly good. I, don't, I, I look particularly young, to be honest. You do. Well, the thing no, is, no, I'm no. looking at you now, right now, on the thing, and you look young. You look young, mate. You don't. I wouldn't put you at fifty-one. Well, it's a high-definition camera, so it's not hiding. You know, I tell you who does look old. I was looking the other day. Um, have you watched the ITV, the new ITV breakfast show yet? Uh, ben Shepherd. <gasps> Correct. How old is he? He's, well, he's he, eighty-three. He's what? Eighty-three. He's not. A, he's not. He's not in his forties yet, is he? I think. I think that what's happened with poor old Ben Shepherd is that you know he was like quite doing well in his presenting, wasn't he? And then what happened? And then what? I think he had a falling out with... Cause I, didn't he do the, the X Factor or something like that? Wasn't he on that? Or oh, I don't know. I don't the watch X that. Factor. I'm sure he was. And, um, well, you know, if you upset someone, then they're going to get rid of you, aren't they? A bit like King Jimmy. But, you know... Um, oh, stop it. <laughs> you're talking about these people. The people that watch this show don't know who you're talking about. Just as well, because they're not important enough to know. <laughs> Thank you for calling in, Keith. You're welcome. Have a nice day. Cheerio. Keep up, keep up the lovely work, and you're looking great. But don't go too far, Chris. No, no, I've, 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 um, I've um, levelled it just under twelve. I need to. I've put on a lot of weight, and I need to do it. I'm going to. I, I, when I went on that raw, I went on the raw diet, which was salads and just eat, eating just salads and everything that you can eat actually raw. And in the morning, I would get up and also have porridge because it's the best thing to porridge, have. Porridge, yeah. And I yeah. had it. I had the oats one, the one with the man on the front of it. Yes, oats, Scott's porridge oats. With, with um, golden syrup in it. Oh, yes, golden syrup. Very nice. Yes, I'm Very going to start nice. that again on Monday. Start walking, start swimming, and um, hopefully um, lose a bit. Because I have put on a little bit. I'm enjoying myself a bit too much, to be honest with you. Well, it's, it's in your hands, Keith. I know. Do you know what I booked today? Hmm? I booked a holiday. Where are you going? I'm going to Thailand. Oh, Ty- there's somewhere I've always wanted to go. Well, I'm going in January. But, I, you know, getting lost and all that business, I'm, I'm not good at travelling, really. Getting lost? Mm. I'll get lost. Get a little helper, like I've got. Always Ready get up! lost. Bye, Chris. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Keith George, ringing in from the, the Canaries there. Um, let me see. Daniel says he's starving. Did you try singing this week to if make it bad? Well, I sang on Monday... Um, that was the only day I sung. Um, no, Daniel, I, you know, there's something wrong here. They, they, they've got to find out what it is. I just hope it's nothing, nothing too serious. Uh, ben, let, let me just get through these. And then I want, I want to talk about scouts today, boys and girls. Uh, I don't like to, to miss any messages out at all. Oh, good morning. Uh, nephew Jimmy Butler is with us this morning. Good morning, Jimmy Butler. Yes. He's with us this morning. He's up in, um, oh, what do you call it? Up in um, Lincolnshire. Nice part of the world. Woodall Spot. And Jason is with us as well. Jason. Is that Jason from Berkshire, uh, 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 Berkshire Events? Can't believe you're with us this morning. Good morning, Jason. Laminated autograph, he thinks. I quite like the idea of that. Laminated autograph. I'm not quite sure what he's going to spill on it, but uh, there we are. Good morning, Jason. And uh, Sean is with us this morning. Good morning, Sean. Barry Manilow will be in Ipswich in around two weeks, so that's fantastic. I know some people that are going to Ipswich as well. I think Wendy's going to the Ipswich one. Now, um, scouts. I wanted to talk to you this morning about scouts. Scouts, guides, boys' brigade, anything like that. Were you ever in any of these? All right? Because UK scouting membership, this was in uh, yesterday's Daily Mail, has grown by almost a quarter in the last 10 years. And there's more now than half a million scouts. Uh, that's just in, in this country. 500,000 scouts. You know, you, are we in the Scouts? Oh, Kayla, we'll do our best. We will do our best. That's the Cubs thing. Because oh, I've done all that. was in the Cubs. I was a sixer. I was sixer of yellow six. Yellow six sixer. That was me. And then I went on to the Scouts. Um, when I first joined the Scouts from the Cubs, I didn't like it. I went to a pack, a, 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 a scout group called the, from, from Cubs, from First Rohampton 
Cubs, I went to the Roehampton Spires Scouts. And the thing is, when you go from Cubs to Scouts, you've gone from being the oldest to the youngest. And I, I just didn't feel I fitted in there. Do you know what I mean? And I wasn't keen on it at all, being being in those scouts. So I only stayed a few weeks. And then I transferred back over to First Roehampton Scouts. And we had the most wonderful scout leader who was totally dedicated to his group. Dib, dib, dib. Daniel says, that's right. Were you in the Scouts, Daniel? It was fantastic. The story goes on. The Scout Association says its membership have shot up to 550,457 members in the last decade. And in this time, female membership has grown as well from 69,000 to 128,000. Now, there are female Scouts now. Not quite sure how that works because I came out of it... Oh, excuse me, 73, 83, 84, 85, about 1986. And there are now Girl Scouts as well. There were no Girl Scouts at the time. There was Scouts for boys and there was Girl Guides. OK, you are, you know, if you were a boy, you were in the Scouts. If you were in the Girl Guides, you were in the, in, if you were a girl, you were in the Girl Guides. It says the number of adults volunteering has also increased uh, by 14 and a half thousand in 10 years. But more than 40,000 young people want to join and are unable to because more adult volunteers are required to help, the association says. Now, um, I was also an Arcala. I, I must say I was listening to this bloke on the radio and I'm, I, I, I'm doing this story because I heard uh, LBC do it the, the other night a guy called Ollie Manns and he obviously didn't have a bloody clue what he was talking about because he was saying uh, that uh, the, the Cubs in charge of the Cubs are Aquila Aquila no it's not Aquila it's Arcala idiot <laughs> do your research Ollie oh it was <laughs> and he was talking, you know, he was talking about this subject and he had clearly never been in the Cubs and the Scouts. He didn't have a bloody clue what he was talking to. And people were ringing up and they were saying what a wonderful time they had and how they learnt not. And he would come back with something like, for example, well, why did you have to go to the Scouts to learn knots? Couldn't you have done it at home? He just didn't get it. He's one of those. You know these people that don't get it? I keep coming across people who don't... You say something and they just don't get what's going on. I mean, honestly, Ollie, you, if you didn't know about the Scouts and the Cubs, you shouldn't have bloody well started talking on about them. Because clearly your callers knew more than you did. Absolutely useless, that show was. I was, I was, I, I wanted to ring in, but I was driving, and I won't use the phone while I'm driving. You see, I wasn't even going to pull over because he's on late at night. No wonder he's on late at night. You know, <laughs> he probably had this producer. Oh, you know, I, I know what's happened. Him and his producer will have picked up a paper. And, oh, that looks a good. Let's do that story too. We don't know anything about it, but we're blag it. Well, you didn't manage it, mate. It was awful. Um, it goes on. Uh, the association said it's launching a plan to recruit a further 58,000 young people, as well as 18,000 more adult volunteers by 2018. Now, <clears throat> I, I, as I say, was an arc. Oh, we've got a couple of messages. Let, let's do these messages coming in. Daniel says uh, he, he was just in the Cubs, couldn't join the Scouts, and the Scout leader was arrested. Is that true, Daniel? Oh, God. Honestly... Is that true? Oh, why do we have to go on to that? Let me have a look there. Let me just uh, close those little, little windows down because I don't know what I'm doing at the moment. One second. Let the thing up. Uh, there we are. That's it. Lovely. Cleared those down. Otherwise it gets very confusing. Um, I was uh, an Arcala of a Cub Pack for about a year and a half, two years, um, just before I got married, actually. that was So that would have been uh, 19... 
1983, 1982, 83. I was quite young. I was uh, 19 or 20 at the time. And it was the third Roehampton Cub Pack, which used to meet at a school at the bottom of uh, Clarence Lane, which is in Roehampton. And it was all right. It's... Being a, 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 a leader is, is actually, I found it much more work than you think it is. You know, you've got to collect the subscriptions, the money, and I'm just trying to think what we what the money used to be spent on. Oh, just books and uh, maybe if they were going... Well, I never actually took them away on a camp. Uh, but it, it, it was hard work. I found it hard work. And after about a year and a half, I, I let it go. And uh, actually, that pack closed down and we moved everyone to the first Roehampton uh, uh, pack afterwards. But going back further than that, um, certainly in the Cubs... I remember uh, our first ever camp, which I think was at a place called Broadstone Warren. I think that was the first camp I ever went to. And I remember we weren't sleeping in tents at the time. We were in like, like this big dormitory. And there were no bunk beds or anything like that. We literally slept on the floor on perhaps bits of foam mattress or or just on the floor. I don't think I had a foam or anything like that. So I was just basically a sleeping mat on on the floor. Or I might have had one of those, you know those things that you get at school, the green mats that you do the exercising on? I think I was slept on one of those. But I remember this, and it was my first time away from home and my mum and dad and all that business. And I, th I was incredibly lonely. You know, I really was. I don't remember friends. Oh, yes, I do. Alan. Alan Campbell, Alan Campbell and Steve Short were a couple of friends at the time who were also in the Cubs. And I, I remember going outside during the daytime and we were doing all sorts of um, things under, under not, not under tents, under the, just the, the fly sheet, you know, the bit on top of the tent. There were little things going on, like making things out of bits and pieces, maybe yoghurt pots and stuff like that. Cardboard bits and pieces. And also um, doing running, sort of running stuff and games outside. You know, physical exercising. That's what Scouts was all about. A lot of physical exercising all the time. Cubs and Scouts. And I think that the I, I remember the the food and that and I you know I was very funny with my food and as as indeed I am now, you know you'd never get me to chuck a, a Chinese or an Indian down my throat from a takeaway or anything like that. Um, and the, the highlight of the holiday I think was queuing up at the at, at the old telephone waiting to ring my mum, you know who was only half an hour down the road. It wasn't. It wasn't very far to go at all. She wasn't far away. It might not have been Broadstone Warren. I can't remember exactly where it was. It was somewhere down the A3, which comes out of London. It was somewhere down there um, before... Certainly before Chertsey, before... Before Tol... Somewhere, I think it was around Tolworth somewhere. Tolworth in Surrey. That seems to ring a bell. If you come down the M A3 and on the left-hand side, I'm sure it was on the left-hand side behind a load of shops was a camping site, and that's where we were. We used to queue up at this phone and you used to pick up the phone, dial the number and put two pence in, and half the time you'd lose your money. I was so upset I couldn't get through to my mum. So that was my first camping. Um, we also camped at a place called Buckmore Park as I joined the Scouts. We went into the Scouts. That was a little bit more rough and tumble in the Scouts. I loved it. We had a fantastic time, Scouts. And they taught you things. They taught you to respect other people and what they do. They taught you useful things. How to cook a meal. How to cook on an open fire. I don't know... If in this day and age, scouts, when they go away on camping sites and things like that, actually are allowed to cook on open fires. Maybe you've been a scout in the last 10 to 15 years. If you have been, I'd love to hear from you this morning, because I don't know how much it's changed. Certainly there are now girls in the scouts so presumably one has to have female leaders as well as male leaders would that be right 
you know. I mean, girls have their own um, problems completely different from boys, I think, a lot of the time. Or what do you do? I mean, do you know what I mean? So, presumably, they have female leaders as well. Do they? And I don't know how much Scouts has changed in the last 15 years. If you were anything to do with the Scouts, either a leader or a scout or a carp in the last 15 years, I'd love to hear from you this morning so you can tell me about it. And I've got a few questions to ask you on, on, on the way things have changed. Do let me know. OK, you can call in this morning either by Skype. My Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R. I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's my Skype in number. Just pick up the Skype and call me because I'd like to hear from you this morning. There's a phone number. It's a local London number. It's not premium rate. The phone number is 020 8133 6358. Okay. 020 8133 6358. That's the local London number. Or if you don't want to talk, you could always send us a, a, a live message on the Skype. As I say, the Skype name is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Failing that, you can send an email. If you're watching a recording of the show at some later time, then send us an email about your experiences in the Scouts. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk. Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. I really would like to speak to someone who was something to do with the Scouts last 10 to 15 years. Further back than that, I can talk about myself, you see, because I was there. Wonderful, wonderful times. Ben says, was it Walton Fur's Scout Camp? I don't think it was. I did go to Walton Fur's Scout Camp many times. That was at Cobham. That was at Cobham in Surrey. Is it still there, Walton First? Oh, that was a funny old place. A lot of our, whenever we had like weekend camps or something like that, that's where we go. That's why I took my, because we had patrol camps. Okay, so the scouts were split up into patrols. So you'd have your scout group and that would be split up into patrols. Now, what was my patrol called? Because I was a patrol leader. I worked through and became patrol leader. Do you know, I can't remember. Tiger, no, not tigers. Oh, it was a bird. It was a bird. It wasn't kestrel. Oh, it was a bird. The name of a bird. Can't remember. What was the name of the bird? Kestrels and. My mate was the. Um, Leader of the Kestrels, of the Kestrel group, of patrol. I can't, rem I can't remember. It's too long ago. I've actually got my cub, cub jumper upstairs with the badges on it. I've still got that. I think it's more like a glove now, you know. <laughs> when you look at these old clothes, and you think to yourself, my God, how did I ever wear that? And it's tiny. This, this little jumper is tiny. Um, so, yes, Walton Furs. That was a nice place. And as I say, in those days, we would make open fires. And you dig your pit in the ground, put the wood in, put a grate on top and light it. And I remember the woodpile. Horrendously dangerous places, woodpiles. Which was exactly as it sounds, a big pile of old wood. There was a coffin place, were places where they made coffin, I think an undertaker's nearby, or perhaps just the woodworks that made the coffins to sell to the undertakers, don't know. And this big pile of wood used to be offcuts. A lot of it was offcuts from coffins, and you could you could definitely see shapes of, of like coffin bits and pieces in this wood pile. A lot of which had big rusty old nails protruding in the wood in this pile. And us scouts, we just go jumping onto this pile of wood, you know, in trainers. And there must have been quite a few occasions where scouts and young, young boys like myself at the time would have gone onto this pile of wood 
stood on an hour and it would have gone straight through there. Uh, not trainers, I tell a lie, there were no trainers. Plimpsoles. We used to wear plimpsoles during the day. Often uh, a leader might tell us, you know, make sure you got boots to go. None of us had boots. We didn't have boots. We couldn't afford boots. We had trainers at the time. Climbing onto this old wood pile and a pair of old trainers, honestly. And you'd collect the wood and take it down and you'd find some way of lighting the fire. Um, match and some newspaper scrunched up. I don't think... I'm sure we didn't have those fire lighters. We did just didn't have them. You used to scrunch up some newspaper under a little bit of kindling, some little tweaks and that on top of the newspaper. And once that had got going, you'd have a little bit of wood on top. And then you'd do all your cooking like that on that open fire. You try and keep that fire going through the day so you didn't have to relight another one because that was always a pain in the ass trying to get a fire light. Um, ben says could, it could have been Bentley Cops near Shepparton. I don't. I don't think it was far as Shepparton. Ben, it was down the A3, okay, and it was possibly at Tolworth, just before Tolworth, on the left. I wonder if you could have a little look on the internet, Ben, and see if you can find anything um, that might give us a clue what that was called. Uh, Mark says, at Forest School, young people used to cook on fires there. So, um, was, was that a scout group at all? I don't know if that was a scout group. Daniel, no, it wasn't Eagle. Castro Sw Sw Swifts? Swifts? Was it Swifts? No, can't remember. I am desperately trying to remember what the name of our um of our uh, scout group was. And Walton Furs and the bloke in charge of the Walton Furs campsite can't remember his name either, but he was as mad as a hatter. Mad as a hatter. They had this old toilet block. Okay? The toilets. So you'd have all these tents around and you'd have a block, like a building with old toilets. And they built a new one, right? And the new toilets were never opened because the bloke who was running... Now, what was he called? The bloke running the campsite. He had a special name as well, didn't he? Camp Warden, Camp Warden. The warden who used to run the scout camp um, wouldn't open the new toilets in case they got vandalised. So they were all stuck using the old ones with only cold water... There was no hot water, cold water to wash in and everything. Mind you, we never washed. You, <laughs> you never used a wash in the Scouts, did you? Not at all, no. Never washed in the Scouts. You, you brushed your teeth, that was about it. Of course, you weren't old enough to shave by then. And there were some showers. Rarely did those get used, but the camp warden, he used to, he was mad as a gnat. He's probably not around anymore. I think he was about 50 then. But everything seemed to run all right. And we would leave the camp and go down the sweet shop for a walk and, and that things. The sweet shop was a big, you know, a big, a big thing as well when he was at a scout camp. He used to wait for the tuck shop to open. So you'd go down there with your money and buy all sorts of sweets and bits and pieces. That was fantastic. So that was Walton First uh, Scout Camp. Thank you very much for um, uh, bringing that up, Ben. Another scout camp uh, that I went to regularly was Buckmore Park. I think that's in Kent. I did look it up uh, about a year ago, and it is still going. And we used to go to Buckmore Park in February. Bloody hell, it was cold. It was so cold there. There used to be, uh, there was more than, I think I must have gone there about four or five times. <coughs> and two or, two or three times out of those four or five, there was snow. Not just a little bit of snow. You know, there would be a few inches of snow on the ground. And I remember, and, and the scout leader, Ted Malden was his name. Wonderful man. He, we all used to wear, have to wear shorts during the daytime. I mean, there's no way I'd do that now. I must admit, I can't even remember being cold. That's a strange thing about it. But we would have shorts on during the daytime. Or we'd have a coat on outside, doing cooking over fires. 
Uh, there, at Buckmore Park, we weren't in tents there. We used to be, again, in a dormitory, and they were like bunk beds. And I used to uh, sleep head to head with, uh, you know, bunk beds all the way around this big, it was a big, big dormitory. The whole troop was in this one dormitory. There was no heating. There was no heating in this dormitory. Not only that, there was like a, a big chimney in the middle of it so that the air could flow through. And single glazing, it was freezing in this place. And we, we used to get in our pyjamas and in our um, sleeping bags at night. I don't know why any of us didn't freeze to death. There was no heating. And you know what scouts are like? We used to have a crafty cigarette. I was smoking at the time. A lot of the scouts used to smoke at that time back in the 70s. Not in the room. You know, you used to go outside, round the back... I thought, oh, quick, Skip's coming. Skip was the leader. Skip's coming. Quickly put your cigarette out. And just, yeah. Are you not smoking, man? Dear? No, not us, Skip. <laughs> and at the time, because I don't think I was a patrol leader then. I'm going back a little bit further here. At the time, I wasn't a, a, a patrol leader then. So uh, there would be another room where the patrol leaders would sleep all together. And they were smoking away and drinking cans of lager that they'd smuggled in. <laughs> Wonderful times. And at Buckmore Park, there was a swimming pool uh, where we used to go swimming. And also uh, there was... Um, there was roller skating. There was roller skating there. I always remember going around this roller skating rink and a song that kept getting played over the speakers was Silver Lady by David Soul at that time, uh, a, you know, a hit in the charts at that time. And there was go-karting. I was scared of the go-karts. I don't know why. Go-karting now. We would be there for, uh, I think, it wasn't a week. I think it was like a long weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday type thing. And we get a lot of activities done in that time. Buckmore Park Scout Camp. I don't know if you can actually... I, I have a feeling it's been opened up to other people other than scouts now. I'm not quite sure about that. Fantastic times. And it was real comradeship there as well with the other scouts, you know. As I say, you would be taught all these things. Cooking. Doing knots. Cleaning. How would you respect other people? Learning to swim. Stuff you couldn't do elsewhere. There were even air scouts where you could actually learn to fly a little plane. Great, great times. If you have a child, if you have a child, then I highly recommend them to go and join your local scout group. It's really good. As I say, don't know how it works. I haven't had anyone call in. I was hoping someone was going to call in who had something to do with the Scouts in the last few years. Um, but it hasn't happened and we've only got a few minutes left now. <clears throat> um, let's have a quick look here. See if anyone else is talking about Scouts at all. <laughs> do-do. It was a do-do, LOL. That's from Ronnie. He's with us this morning as well, are you? He, wouldn't let, he got chucked out of the Cubs, I think. <laughs> he, just, he just didn't fit in at all. There's a surprise. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, Daniel says, I remember all the songs we used to sing. Oh, yeah. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. And all that business on the coach when we're going to the various scout camps. Mark says, forest school is a way of learning outdoors. Some schools run forest schools during a day. He went to Tolmer's campsite many times. I'm not quite sure where Tolmer's is. I see the link there, so I'll have a, a little look at that. Ben says, it could have been uh, Birchmere was a bit further out. I'm not, not sure what the scout camp was, Ben. Really not. Uh, Jason Lewis says, Coworth Park is lovely. That's the hotel that we had afternoon tea uh, this week. We are supplies there for entertainment. Um, it was on YouTube, on Google+. Plus. You have, if, if they, however... Uh, I, it's, 
too many complicated um, bits and pieces coming in there. All right. Thanks very much. There we are. That's uh, the Scouts. If you have been in the Scouts, please tell me what it was about years ago by email, because we're nearly out of time now. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.com dot co dot uk all right chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk a couple of emails have come in uh ian <clears throat> ian duff saw the video from coworth hotel yesterday he says very posh a throwback to the opulent 1920s oh it was fantastic it was actually thursday we went wasn't it and the video went up today uh, yesterday so do have a look at that uh, when we finish the show because we're nearly finished now but even uh, the, the, you can watch those at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, and look for the video dated Friday the 2nd of May 2014. Uh, Marge, on the subject of the hotel yesterday, said, That's beautiful. I'm going to go to, it's like going to someone's home to eat. Oh, it's a beautiful hotel, Coworth Hotel uh, in Ascot. You sit on a couch, and I love the surrounding area. You are so blessed, Chris, to live in such a beautiful area. Oh, I love Bracknell. I love it round here. It is so nice. I need to go out and find something nice around here to post off Oklahoma. Uh, Marge is in Oklahoma in the USA. With our drought, it's hard to find such lovely greenery, but it's doing better since we had some rain. Rod must be rich to afford to eat out like that. You're having a laugh, aren't you? I had to pay for that. I paid for that, I love you, though. Uh, quick phone call. Who's on the line? Who do you think? Hello, Ron, all right? Hello, dear, how are right, you? Right, just stay there a minute, Ron, because we'll have to overrun if you're going to call in. Uh, the, oh. Fancy call it, look at the time, look at the time. You've overrun. One second. Those of you listening uh, to the show on UK Health Radio, you're going to leave us now. Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we'll be back again for another little bit of a chat next week. Don't forget, you can send in an email. I'd love to hear from you, especially if you were in the Scouts, Cubs, Girl Guides, Boy Brigades, in the last 15 years, how is it different? Are you allowed to cook on open fires? What's it like, the fact that girls are now in the Scouts? What difference has that made? Do let us know on an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thank you to UK Health Radio listeners. OK, hello, hello. Ron. All right. Hello. hello. A very, very good morning to you. Fancy you ringing in on this mega 11 million viewers this morning. 11 million viewers. No, no 11 11 million. They can't get the million them, there. Them, oh, hang on. on. Them, Isn't that funny? You've come on, it's gone down to 10 straight away. That's because I've, that's because I've just switched you off. Talking so of which? Eh? Yeah, uh, I've just switched you off. I, I heard you were talking about the Scouts. I wasn't in the Scouts. No. But I was in the Scouts for a very little period. Now, why, why did you leave the Scouts or were you chucked out? No, I left because green didn't suit me. <laughs> I remember you telling me that. Yeah. Green didn't suit me. Didn't like it, dear. <laughs> I didn't like all that running around and getting dirty. Now, what I'm ringing in to say... Hang on a minute. Marge says, happy birthday. She sent in a little email last week and I didn't tell you. So Marge oh, says, you, Marge. happy birthday. Thank you, Marge. Yeah, no, the reason why, the reason why I'm ringing in because you was talking about the scouts and how you never used to wash and how it was so cold. I think this is what's made you the person that you are today, dear, because you still don't wash and, um, and you like the cold. And you like running around in dirty old plimps holes. So it's was... actually made you the person you are today. I think, do you know, I think you're right. I think the, I'm The right. only thing is, like, the open fires that we used to cook on. Now that you've well, mentioned that, you know, there's an area in my garden where I quite <laughs> easily dig a hole and start cooking on open fires. I think we should do that. You want to do a cook on an open fire? Why don't we just buy a barbecue? No, 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 no. It's not the same. I saw, funnily enough, I thought of you yesterday because I had to pop into. Come a bit closer to the speakers. I am. I had to pop into Sainsbury's yesterday. Oh God! Don't advertise them, please. <laughs> Only because I could, I did, I couldn't be bothered to go over to Waitrose, so I had to pop in Sainsbury's. Right, no, no, I'm not mentioning them twice. Not mentioning. Little Waitrose is closer to me than what. And they had they had stacks and stacks of those barbecues there, right? And I thought of you for some reason. I thought, oh, should I take one of those one. It's not the same. It's not absolutely not the same as doing it on a barbecue that you've lit with a match. No, you you no. you've got to build up the fire, put little rolls of screw ups and newspaper, little twigs on top, get the twigs little going. Little pieces of coffin, eh? Little pieces of coffin. Little pieces of coffins. 
God knows why I didn't end up with a rusty nail through my feet on those. So dangerous. And that's why I don't think um, they cook on open fires anymore. I'm sure they probably don't. What, because of rusty nails? Yeah. Well, people and climbing it's, on it's, wood piles. Health and safety gone mad. Uh, health, health, health and safety. safety. Health and well, no, safety. You can't do that in case this happens. You can't do that in case that happens. Yeah. Firemen, uh, dustmen can't lift up bins in case, it, in case they hurt their oh, back. Oh, don't start going on about that, dear. Oh, oh well, Christ, rubbish. Yeah. European rubbish, dear. European rubbish. Yeah. Do you know, Marge actually thought you paid for the meal the other day. I thought you were having a laugh, didn't you? It was my birthday. I know it was your birthday. Oh, what, when we went to London? Yeah. No. Oh. We didn't go to London. What, cat, what when, we went to cat, when we went to see Marge? No. Oh, Cowboys Park? Yes. Oh, Vanessa, no, no, Marge, let, 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 me, um, let, me, put, let me put you straight here. Yeah, hang on a minute. Was I overcharged? Hang on a minute. No. Because you didn't have the champagne. Hang on. Hang on. 9, 12, 29, 28, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, What do you 12. mean, are you... Oh, no, it's OK. For one moment, I thought we'd been charged for three champagne, three champagne lunches and not two and an ordinary one. Yeah, I don't drink, do I? I thought that boyfriend of yours took the mick a bit, having the champagne, dear. I don't. He had it on my behalf. <laughs> Lauren the cat has just come to say hello to me. Are you popping around today at all? Um, I'm not sure. I've got to go. I must go and get my hair cut. I'm supposed to be going out later, aren't I? Oh, where are you off to? to are you off tonight another, again? Yeah. Another, another night birth, off? And a birthday, a birthday jaunt out, dear. Uh, no, hang on a minute. How long is this bloody yeah. birthday going to go on for? Oh, at least a month, dear. Shh. Having a laugh, haven't you? A month. At least a month. I very well may pop in for tea on the way through. Why Are you, are you indoors all afternoon, dear? I am. I'll be going to bed at probably about four, four, five, six, go up at seven, leave at eight, four. I'll, I'll be going to bed about four. Lovely. And it was lovely to hear Keith, Keith George's dulcet tones. Oh, have you been with us all morning then? I, well, I've heard bits and pieces. I was, I was half awake. I woke up to, to Keith George's dulcet tones. All right. And then you rabbit on on about something, so I'll, I'll come downstairs and have my breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Marge says... If they, however, knew you were gay in the Scouts when you were young, this is in America, of course, when you were young, they would have kicked you out, which is sad. I don't think that's the case now, Marge. I don't think that's the case. Besides, actually, at that point, I didn't know I was gay, really. She says at least that's what they do in America. My apologies, well, I did not realise you. Know, the Americans are like you. They're very, very behind. Very behind. Very, very <laughs> behind, yeah. And yeah. she likes the plant. Can you see the plant behind me? I've got an orchid, orchid as yeah. well. Beautiful. I've ordered, a, I've ordered a pot for mine. Have you? Yes. I've repotted that other one that you told me to. Oh, good lad. All right. Okay, um, well, I must, go. I must get on, dear. Righty-ho. Well, thanks for calling in. That's all right. Thank you for running over with me. I did knock at your door yesterday afternoon, but once again, the door was closed and locked. Well, why don't you use, why don't you use your key? I didn't have it with me. I just popped oh. up on the way back from... Where did I go yesterday? I was probably asleep on the sofa, dear. What did I go? I went into town to something. Oh, to... Um... Oh. Did my car... Was my car there? Your car? Yes, it's a big grey thing with big wheels. Yes, it was. Yeah, you oh, were well, in. You just ignored me again. I would have been asleep, dear. <sighs> Often happens. I just walk Often. over to your house and the door is locked. Well, I hope that... You must remember hope, to bring your keys. Well, I hope that's the same when you end up in heaven, which will be before me. I don't think so. Thank I do. You. Goodbye, viewers. Goodbye. Friends. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. 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 There we are. Ooh, best friend Ron calling in today. It's quite nice, isn't it? Mark says, have you ever been to Gilwell Park? Yes, I went there. Now, what, that was for some sort of special occasion as well. Gilwell Park. Um, might have been the Chief Scouts Award, something like that. I don't know. can't remember where I went to Gilroy Park. And that's kind of the, the, the big scout park in the UK, isn't it? Gilroy Park. Yeah. And uh, Daniel says, happy 50th birthday, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, what is he today? I think he's 41. I can't remember now. All right. So we're nearly done now. Let me just uh, see if there's any, anyone's uh, any little messages that we've miss, missed out this morning. Looks like we got something from Russia. View comment. Not quite sure what that means, but it's like little, like little letters, isn't it? 
<laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you for your Russian. It might be Russian. It looks Russian to me. Thank you very much for your Russian comment. But unfortunately, I'm unable to understand what it is. Tough me to go, boys and girls. Thank you very much for uh, joining in and watching and listening this morning. Once again, please, please, if you were in the Scouts at any point, do let me know what it was like for you. I'd love to continue this, possibly on next Saturday's show, or even on one of the short videos during the week if they're, if they're short emails. Send us an email in, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and tell me all about your time in Scouts. All right? Um, youtube.com forward slash Chris Weird in UK is where you will find all the little videos throughout the week boys and girls time for me to go I haven't got my little thing lined up here have I hang on a minute oh there it is there it is we like the, the, the closing thing to be correct and uh, have a lovely weekend it's another bank holiday okay what are you doing? Are you in London this weekend? If you are, you could join us at one of my karaoke nights uh, tonight, uh, Saturday the 3rd of May. I'll be doing karaoke at the Lorry Arms, completely free of charge. OK, no charge to come in. Well, I'm not free of charge, but it is for you to come in. Uh, come along the Lorry Arms, which is on Shepherd's Bush Road in Hammersmith. And I will need singers tonight because I, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to manage it myself. All right, uh, 9 p.m. till 1 a.m. And on Sunday, I'll be doing karaoke at the Cherry Tree, which is in East Dulwich. You come out of East Dulwich, you turn right, and it's like 30 seconds from the front door of the uh, over overground station. It's not bad, is it? East Dulwich train station. That's an early one, 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I'll see you soon. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye now.